Uh, so eager to get back into game week. Uh, was great energy in the building all during the bye week. Kids put in great work last week, Tuesday through Thursday, and enjoyed some downtime on Friday and Saturday. Uh, coaches have done a tremendous job on the road recruiting, pouring into the kids. Again, love where we're at as, as an organization. Kids came back yesterday doing things the right way and uh, had some good early work on, on a Sunday. And uh, again, looking forward to getting into our normal routine here as we prepare for uh, a good trip up to Mount Pleasant and Central Michigan. Obviously, they're coming off a really big win. They've won six out of the last seven at home. You know, they, they know how to protect their home turf and found a way to win this past week. You know, dangerous team that, that can do it both through the air and on the ground. So we got to do a, a great job on our end preparing, you know, to go win and, and handling our day to day process the right way. What has stood out to you most when watching the film? About who? For this opponent, I mean, it all starts up front with their guys, right? They returned three out of their five stars from last year, and they've really settled in nicely together as a unit. Um, they're they're an imposing, physically imposing group up front, right? I mean, four out of the five are over 300 pounds. And then uh, Joey Labus you know, is a kid out of Ohio that I was actually one of his first early offers, you know, in a former lifetime ago. And he ended up going out to Iowa and now transferring back. Like he he's the, the straw that really stirs the drink for them, right? A lot of their run game has RPO concepts that are built into it. He's a good decision maker and, um, you know, is putting them in a good position to be successful. And again, they're a very balanced attack in that regard, right? Sean, I noticed in their first game, they scored about every way you can, three on the ground, three through the air, interception return, punt return, kickoff return. Mm -hmm. It's just a well-balanced team. Yeah, they are. I mean, they're well-coached. Coach McElwain and his staff do a really good job. They, they have really talented kids in all three phases of the game, and they have dangerous returners. They have dangerous, explosive playmakers offensively, and, and you know they, they have a very sound scheme defensively. And, and people that you know, if you give them a chance, again, like that pick six, you know, week one, again, they they're opportunistic. They get their hands on it, and they're able to change the course of the game that way. What's the depth chart quarterback for the game? Uh, it's the same as I mean, what we've been working with and everything. Danny's been getting good work, you know, and again, he's been able to maximize the, the bye week to continue to get healthy. Javance continues to get good reps, and, and those two guys are continuing to, you know, go back and forth with it all. And we'll see whoever gives us the best chance to win, you know, at the end of the week will be the guy who gets to start. Okay. And are you guys doing anything at practice to help you eliminate the penalties? Yeah, everything that we do each day is about our culture and the discipline that we want to have in it and how we go about our approach, right? And so obviously the execution of what we've been doing and the end result of the amount of flags that are on the field is not what anyone wants to have, right? And so every single day, how we go about our business, our attention to detail, the relentless focus, the relentless effort that we want to have is being emphasized each and every single day, right? And again, as we build this culture and we do it the right way to our standard and our model, right? Then those uh, the execution and the end results of those penalties will go down. You know, we've been doing up, down, um, you know, so that, that Sunday after we came back from uh, Cal, I mean, as a team, collectively, myself and some of the other coaches as well, for all the 15-yard penalties, you know, we banged out some up-downs in that regard, just as some good accountability. Like, But we stressed from day one, way back in January, right, about accountability, about having discipline. And again, we'll continue to stress those things so that we can tighten those things up and obviously not shoot ourselves in the foot, right? I mean, because good teams don't beat themselves. And, and right now, there's obviously too many errors, and that's on me. And we need to continue to stress how we're building our culture, the attention to detail that we need to have with it. But again, the energy, the enthusiasm, the way the guys have responded from those challenges, they know what they need to clean up and how they need to fix it. They've taken ownership of it as well. And I know that we'll continue to get better with that as we go forward. Danny won the job at training camp. So does he just have to show this week that he's fit or did you ask him something that opens up the competition? No, I mean, Danny's got to show that he's healthy and that he's able and capable to be able to do it. And then he gives us the best position to, to win with where he's at. And then again, Javance knows that he's a snap away, right? The same way that he was, you know, and able to step up and respond. But again, both those guys are, are more than capable to do it. And they both have to prepare as if they're going to be the man as we go forward here. How much progress did Danny show last week? Good. I mean, he's in a good spot. Again, he's getting good majority, uh, you know, a lot of snaps that he would normally get in a regular week, you know, all through the bye. And, you know, again, he took a good chunk of the work yesterday as well. So we'll see as that thing continues to go, how we progress throughout the week. And again, the guy who gives the best chance to, to have success, he'll be the guy that, that gets the start. Based on what you saw the video after that, that last game, what did Javance do that kind of surprised you? Nothing that surprised me, right? I mean, we believe that practice repetition is game reality, right? I mean, he was composed. He made some really good throws, so some other throws that he knows that he wished that he would have back. But, I mean, he showed us who he was through the time that he's been here and the strides and the growth that he's made, especially through training camp. I mean, there was a lot of similarities to what we saw in camp, to what we saw in that game. There was probably some, you know, first start, first game jitters that, that, that you, he had to get out of his way a little bit there. Turf Monster got him the one time that he was in the open field, and you had a good chuckle about that with it all. But, I mean, again, he, he did a good job, and he had us in position 
you know, to, to, to win that ball game with what he was doing, right? Now he's got to do a good job taking care of the football, you know, and eliminating those, uh, those turnovers that, that happened as well. But, I mean, he, he showed us who he is, what he's capable of, and obviously there's tremendous room for growth as well. Would you ever get into a situation where you play them both because he's a little bit different athletically? I mean, again, we're going to be loyal to winning and, and what it takes to win. If it takes two, you know, we'll, we'll play both of them as we go with all of it. I would prefer not to because, again, I think as you look around the landscape of college football right now, those teams that are trying to mix and match and play with multiple guys, it's hard for either one of them to get into a rhythm. It's hard for the team to rally around behind one of those leaders and who's that going to be, right? But, again, like at the end of the day, whether it's, you know, the, the number of quarterbacks you're playing, it's the style of play that you're playing, right? At the end of the day, we owe it to this class, this team right now in 2024 to put in position to win each and every time that we go out because of, again, the way that we're handling our business throughout the course of the week, our attention to detail, and the culture that we're creating that we're building day after day after day. Central Michigan's averaged 192 rushing yards a game. What can you do on defense specifically utilizing the edge position to kind of slow that run down? Yeah, have a really good knot back, play with really good fundamentals, make sure that we're setting a good edge so that the ball doesn't break our leverage and contain, and um, make sure that we're gap sound, playing and play out with all of it. Having four running backs who have had significant amount of carries and success this season, how do you kind of coach your guys against uh, a running back that much Find the guy with the ball and tackle him and get a lot of hats to the talent, right? Regardless of who's toting it and who's carrying it, they all do a really good job. They're all really talented, right? And so we got to control what we can control. And again, we got to set a firm edge. We got to be gap sound and we got to relentlessly fly to the ball. And regardless of who's carrying it for them, because they're all really talented, we got to show up with multiple hats to the ball and, and to bring that ball carrier down. What kind of challenges for Emmanuel Jr. in terms of his skill set? Yeah, I mean, he can do a lot of different things, right? They're starting to grow his package a little bit with all of it. So, again, you just got to be aware, right, and how they're utilizing the, the different people and their different personnel packages and, and everything. But, yeah, I mean, he, he has, again, a unique skill set that his package, as he continues to earn trust, you can tell that it's growing. Are there any additional challenges in particular about traveling so far to get to them? Uh, I mean, you know, they'll adjust some of our schedule on Friday. There's some things that we typically, you know, like last Friday when we traveled to Cal, you know, we handled here in-house. But because of the time that we're leaving, obviously the time change and getting to Mount Pleasant, right? I mean, you know, the the, the flight and then the drive when we're there, we'll do a little bit more um, on-site at the team hotel than we've done in the past. But again, like, I mean, the, the number of meetings, the amount of time that, you know, we're going to spend on the opponent is, is more because we're coming off the bye, right? And so we need to be able to handle all those little adjustments Instead of meeting here, you know, in the, the, the friendly confines of our facility, we're meeting in a, a ballroom in the hotel instead and everything, right? But in terms of, you know, obviously the kick time, you know, and the time change and everything, like our internal clock will be, you know, hitting about the same time, you know, that breakfast will start. It's the same time that our breakfast starts here each and every single day. So our guys will be up. They'll be ready to play. And again, like we talked about last time, I mean, it doesn't matter where it is, what time zone, what the setting is. Like, let's put the ball down. If you're about it, let's go play and have some fun and get after it. Is uh, Mountain West, Mid American, kind of the same landscape in terms of how they operate financially? I think the players cherry picked by Big Ten on transfer portals. They kind of a lot of the same similarities. I think everyone's dealing with a lot of the same, you know, issues throughout the landscape of college football. It doesn't matter which conference that you're in, right? There's there's things that are going on where you got to do a great job cultivating the environment, cultivating the culture, cultivating the relationships in your building so that the dollar amount is not an issue and you're creating an experience day in and day out that the right guys want to be a part of, that they're hungry to show up, they're hungry to do the work, and that you have those relationships that you can lean upon so that you can develop the guys over the course of their career, regardless of what conference you're in, whether it's Mountain West, it's, it's the MAC, it's the SEC, it's the Big Ten. Like, either you, we all got issues, we all got problems, but more importantly, the way you frame it and the way that you look at it, I think they're great opportunities to pour into our kids, to have those relationships and to have unique experiences that, you know, when our guys look back on it, they're, they're really thankful for their time that they shared here on the Mesa and being an Aztec. What were your experience over the weekend being able to get out and see, see prospects? Yeah, I mean, it was awesome, right? I mean, to be able to, you know, wrap up with a practice here on Thursday and head up to the L.A. area to watch some, you know, high, high caliber kids and to go shake more hands with, you know, the, the high school coaches in the area, continue to get to know them. Again, speaking to those relationships, you know, building a deeper bond with, with them as well so they know, obviously, what we're building and the environment and the culture that we're creating here, that it's going to be an ideal setting for them and their kids. And then to, you know, go watch numerous games on Thursday night and Friday night and then to turn around and come back home and have an unbelievable 
unbelievable official visit and continue to, you know, build, you know, for the future with the guys who were here. Um, again, the staff's done a tremendous job. We went far and wide. It was great information that we were able to gather, and uh, the guys did a great job, you know, th this weekend as well. You're up to about 19 commits. Is mm -hmm. that about where you wanted to be at this time? Are you ahead of schedule? No, I mean, we're, we're, on, we're on schedule with where we wanted to be. You know, there's obviously a few more spots that we need to continue to round out with it. And as we talked about, you know, at, at length, and I've said numerous times that the talent acquisition business is an everyday thing, right? And we're going to continue to do it each and every single day and make sure that we're getting the right characters and the right people, you know, in this building to, to continue to help us grow and to do things at a championship level. Is it helpful that the schedule kind of change where you can kind of focus on uh, signing day before the portal opens? Yeah, I mean, I, I think the way that the recruiting calendar has has balanced up, there's some some real benefits to it, right? To where you're going to be able to lock in a lot of your high school kids and then be able to pivot. But again, it's a ongoing, everyday thing. No matter what the you know where where the 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 the, the people are, right? Whether they're on your roster, they're at the high school ranks or at the junior college ranks, they enter into the portal, right? Again, it's just the the state of collegiate athletics right now that you got to do a great job being in tune with all those different groups. But none are more important than the people that are in the building here. Getting back to your team, the back seven defensively, is it been a big surprise or the most pleasing aspect of a one or two start? I mean Again, nothing's a surprise because the guys who have shown, you know, the, the way that they've stepped up and, and what they've done, again, like the public's getting to see it through those first three weeks, but it's who they've been. And when you can go back to, again, spring ball and what we talked about and how opportunistic those guys were and how active they were, you know, Chris Johnson's done a tremendous job, but Chris has done an excellent job, you know, helping us be a leader in the locker room and the culture that we're building by how he shows up each and every single day. So, again, like it, it's certainly a bright spot, but it's not a surprise. But in, in as good as they they have been right there's so much more room for growth and again with who we are and the culture that we're creating we want to be relentless you know in the way that we're improving and competing each and every single day it's the offense do as a whole to ensure that it runs efficiently and that they're able to take advantage of the opportunities given during the game yeah have relentless focus have relentless effort do a great job communicating and play with elite fundamentals right like don't get bored with the basics, right? And we can't get bored with the basics. Like that's why anyone that's had any significant level of success over an extended period of time consistently, they do the basic things really, really well, right? And again, like right now, the way that we're operating, we don't, we, we do it occasionally great, not consistently good, right? So again, like we've taken some real time the past week to fall back in love with the basics and to not be bored with the basics. And again, it's as simple as having great focus, playing with relentless effort, having proper hand placement, having great communication, right? and making sure that we have those building blocks within the foundation, you know, each and every single play so that we can garner the momentum that we need to play at the tempo and the pace that we know is going to be really, really successful for us, not only this week, but as we go forward into the future. Looking forward, uh, it's still ways out, but what are your thoughts on switching over to the Pac-12? Excited about it, right? I mean, it's a tremendous opportunity for us to continue to grow as a university, for us to grow as a program, and, you know, eager to see how the rest of the conference aligns and shakes out, you know, but obviously that's downrange, but there'll be some tremendous opportunity that comes from that that we'll be able to speak to, you know, as we continue to, you know, raise awareness and gain interest with the, the 2026 prospects. And again, within our community, with the, you know, opponents that are going to be coming here to the Mesa year in and year out, uh, I mean, it's a tremendous opportunity for us, and it's a great opportunity for the university. So how many up downs did you and the team end up having to do and was it timed or was it by number? 45. Three sets of 15. There was three 15 yard penalties that go against our standard and our culture. So we did three sets of 15, knocked them out. We were all better for it. And away we go. Video on that, the old <laughs> I mean, hey, if that's the content we're looking for right now, guys, man, we got to play a heck of a lot better ball, and I need to coach a heck of a lot better. <laughs> against the culture, the personal fouls, which ones dictate, ah, uh, it's going to be up-downs on that. The controllables, the, the ones that are controllables. Yeah, the, 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 the personal file, absolutely. That's not who we're going to be. We're going to represent this university in a first-class manner to everyone that's associated with it, the former players, the community, the alumni. Everyone can look to it and be proud with the colors that where they're wearing, the way that they represent, and they're a part of this family. That, that for sure, will never be tolerated, will never be accepted. That's not who we are. It's not what we're building. Did all the coaches do it too or just you? Not all the coaches. There were some of the coaches.